to show how to mend a hole in a sock using a mending loom, also known as a speed weave loom, to create a woven mend, also called a woven darn. So this wooden part has one curved side and I'm gonna put that up towards the hole. I'm just gonna slide this right into my sock. I'm gonna to try to get my hole roughly centered, but it doesn't have to be exact. Remember, I have a hole coming here, so I wanna center the entire thing. And then I'm gonna use one rubber band to secure that. There's a little um, notch in here that gives it a good place to be. I'm gonna pull it just a bit. I don't wanna stretch it super tight, but I do want this to be reasonably flat and easy to work with. Then I'm gonna take the loom part of this and I like to do my woven mends on the bias because knitted fabric is stretchy and woven fabric is not, but if we do it on the diagonal or the bias, then it adds quite a bit of stretch. And then my second rubber band, oops, getting a little tangled here. This is a bit awkward, so don't feel bad if it takes you a few tries. My second rubber band is gonna go onto this ledge in the back here, and I like these looms to have a ledge as opposed to a little tab sticking out from the side. Those can be sharp and just awkward. So now my sock is completely set up on my loom, and I'm ready to start. The thread I'm using here is a blend of wool and nylon. It is a similar color. Um, it's a little bit smaller than what I knitted with, but that's just fine. The important part here is it's gonna be very strong yarn. It's got some nylon in it. If you prefer to not use um, plastic fibers, then you could use something that has a bit of silk or a bit of mohair. Those are also very long, strong fibers. Originally, I probably should have carried this along with my knitting yarn in the heel of the sock, but I did not. So I'm looking here to where I wanna go. I wanna start this about here at the bottom edge, but I'm gonna poke my needle in farther down and then come up in line with my first hook and pull this through. And I'm gonna leave a bit of a tail here and later on I'll show you how I weave that in with a needle. So a bit is dangling. Now I'm gonna wrap this around the first hook. So this has created my first two warp threads. The warp threads are the ones that go vertically. Then I'm gonna take a small sideways stitch here and pull that through, anchoring at the bottom. And sometimes it tangles, just loosen it up. It's usually a slip knot that'll come out if you just loosen it. And now I'm gonna repeat. I'm gonna take this and loop it around my next hook and then come down and take another sideways stitch. It's pretty easy to start slanting for me upwards, for you maybe it's downwards. So just keep an eye on that, or you could even use some sort of a tool to check that things are lined up. So here I can put this by the hooks at the top and these are just below that there. Um, you could even use a disappearing pen used in fabric, like a fabric marker, and draw yourself a line. You could put pins there. I usually eyeball it and I find because I work on the diagonal already, that makes it a bit more forgiving. Again, a little sideways stitch. We're just gonna keep doing this until they're all on there. You don't need to pull it super tight and be careful that you don't start pulling tighter and tighter as you go. It's kind of easy to do that. Now, if your yarn that you're mending with is thicker, then you can always skip some of these hooks. You don't have to use all of them. You can also just not go to the end if you have a smaller hole and you don't need the full width of the loom. So it can be good to get one of these that has more hooks so you have more options, but sometimes the ones with lots of hooks are very big. So I'm gonna skip one here because see how that's starting to lean? So we're just gonna pop over here. Here we go. So to anchor this last stitch, I have been going sideways. Instead here, I'm gonna go vertically, just a little stitch again. And that's gonna set me up to transition from working on my warp threads, which go up and down. And now I'm gonna do my weft threads side to side. Now these little things are super cool because they change what we call the shed of the weaving. They'll change which threads are up. So I like to 
push all these to the right before I go to the right. And notice I'm not going to use the end of the needle. I'm going to use the eye of the needle because there's a bit more, um, less likelihood that you'll stitch through your yarns. So the hooks have raised every other thread up so it's easy for me to find each thread. Then I'm going to pull this through gently. I don't want to pull it tight, but I do want to kind of sit this down. And this looks like I might have stitched through. So I'm just going to break that. There we go. So notice I didn't pull it super tight yet. I'm actually not ever going to pull it super tight, but I'm leaving a bit of an arch here. Then I'm going to take a little vertical stitch on the side, nice and small, and pull this through. Now to do my next pass, I'm going to change the shed by pushing the hooks to the left, and now I'm ready to go to the left. Again, I'm using the eye of the needle, and it's easier if you put it in way up here at the top of the hooks. If you try down here, you're gonna have to work a lot harder. And do keep an eye on it, the hooks, you know, sometimes these threads will not be lined up quite right. So um, we'll look at it as well as just going where there's room. And now, before I do anything else, I'm gonna use my needle to push down the previous row. We call that beating. And then I'm gonna pull this through again, not tight, leave a little arch. Then I'm going to take a small stitch here. Come on, nice and tiny stitch. You want to catch enough that it doesn't pull, but um, not so much that you travel far. And then we're going to repeat. I'm going to change my shed, heading to the right. Needle's also going to head to the right. I'm going to pass it through all of these loops. Push down the previous row and pull it through. So this is running short, so I need to deal with this somehow. An easy way to do it, which kind of adds to the structure of your mend, is to run this down along one of the warp threads. And then I like to add in a turn and run it up along the following warp thread. So I'm still doing my under over thing. I'm following the path of that warp thread. I'm not going to pull this all the way here because I want it out of my way, and then I can cut it. I'll show you a different way later to deal with the ends that you have from starting and finishing it. So I've done a lot of my piece, so I don't need to cut as long of a thread as I did last time. Sometimes you get there with the piece you've got. I find it's better to not cut too much and add on as needed, both because it will um, not waste the thread, but also it's going to be less likely to tangle. Really long threads just tend to tangle. So again, to tuck this in, I'm weaving it in with a warp thread. You don't necessarily have to go all the way to the bottom. And then coming up the next one. Okay, I will show you a different method at the end. And here you can see I am not all the way at the edge because I didn't want to go where I was before. So now I'm just going to go sideways over here and it's all going to blend in just fine. So let's take my little sideways stitch on this side. And we're back in business.
Oh, I see. Huh, this is confusing me. This is my loop fell off this hook. There we go. Fixed. I have not had that happen before. So you can see I'm getting close to the top now, but I'm definitely not done. Um, it does get a little annoying and hard to fit as you get to the top. So if you're not annoyed yet, you have a couple more rows to go. And it looks like there's very little room here. Remember, I haven't pushed down the previous row, so that is going to create more room when I push it down. I still have space for probably two more passes. This is getting real tight. That's okay. I'm still going to do one more because there is still room and I like to end up on the right since I'm right handed. Makes it a little easier for me to do the finishing part. Now, final pass here. This should be tricky and awkward. Again, if it isn't awkward, you're probably not there yet. Final pass is done. I'm now going to release one rubber band and turn these upwards. And I'm going to tilt this so that these loops can come off the hooks. Now I have these loops that are free in the air, so I just need to stitch them down. And this last one tends to be big. That's because it's attached to nothing at the end here. So you can pull it a little bit. So I'm going to take a little stitch through the sock, go through my top loop through the sock again, through the next loop. All right, so I've now finished this part. I still have my yarn tails to deal with. So what I'm gonna do for that is just stick this needle in so it goes into the center of the sock. I'm going to gently Take off my rubber bands, making sure I don't catch myself on the needle. And then I'm going to pull this inside out. And as I do, my little wooden disc is going to fall out. That's fine. Careful with your needle. And you're coming to the inside and pulling all that yarn through. And I'm going to go ahead and flip it all the way inside out. So I have a couple things to do now. I need to anchor this end. I'm also gonna to need to anchor the end from where I started and you'll see a big strand here that you can just pull out. I also want to stabilize these loose loops of my knitting by sewing them down into the woven fabric. So I'm gonna start by just moving this sideways and I do this a lot like how I weave in yarn ends on knitting. I have a whole video on that that describes that a bit more, but I'm just moving it over again on a diagonal. And then I'm gonna go around this circle and I want to catch the free loops of the knitting. It's a lot like I just did with the loops of the weaving, where I'm going through a bit of the woven fabric and then coming up through the knitted fabric. If you're a sewist, um, you probably know this as a slip stitch. Now, you've got a couple options for how to deal with a yarn tail. 
because I can see the structure of my knitted fabric pretty well here, especially up here on the back, I'm gonna go ahead and um, do what I normally do for weaving in knits, which is a diagonal. For about you know, at least half an inch, pull it through, and then I turn it and come back right next to it. So that is plenty, I can cut that off. And I still have a yarn tail from where I started and I'm gonna swap out to a shorter needle here because that'll be easier to work with. I usually use a long needle for the weaving and then a short needle um, for any extra finishing work. Because otherwise I would have to leave myself a very long tail when I started. And again, I can see the structure of the knitted fabric enough here that I'm gonna go ahead and do my diagonal darning. And back down. If you're having trouble with the diagonal darning, if you can't see the knitted fabric, maybe you did a um, mend on a woven piece, the other option would be stitching your yarn tail along the back of the mending yarn that you used. But I can't even see that because I have a good color match here. All right, so we are done. It looks nice and neat on the inside and on the outside. Here's my woven darn, and because it's on the bias, I still have plenty of stretch to make this a functional sock, and stretching goes in both directions. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you had fun.